low. Today we're doing a combination of gentle and restorative yoga. I've got my cloth belt that I use to set up a strap. I don't have to have this, but if I have it, it's nice. I have an option for it later. If we get to it. And I've just got a pile of bolsters, blankets, towels, grab a cushion off your couch, whatever you've got. We use for the restorative portion later. But to start, I'm going to suggest sitting on a blanket. We'll be seated for a little bit today. You can be more comfortable taking the strain off your back. If you find our comfortable seated position, we can rock from side to side, grounding our sits bones, trying to kind of equalize the pressure between the sits bones. And as we find that spot, sit up tall, stand the spine. Roll the shoulders forward and up and back and down. We'll think about lifting the crown of the head toward the ceiling. And we'll just find our breath. And I'm going to tell you a story while you relax and settle in. Because it's instructive. Two nights ago, I was about to go to bed and it was late. My refrigerator began to make a horrendous noise. No idea what it was. So finally I unplugged it and I went to bed thinking, well, it's probably 20 years old. This is old as the condo, I think. It's been there since I've been there. And I'm going to have to buy a new refrigerator or at least pay for an expensive repair. And just bought groceries. Those will probably all go bad now before I can get a repair because who you knows how long that's going to take. And so I was doing what we often do I was catastrophizing the situation. Then I caught myself, reminded myself, and in that moment, in that now, I didn't have any problem at all. There was nothing to do in that moment. Nothing to do except go to sleep. So I finally went to sleep. The next day, I called the repairman, someone came over, looked at it, heard the noise. The noise was not as bad. The next day, I plugged it back in, took the back off. The noise was caused by two little strands of Easter grass stuck in the fan of the refrigerator. And that's all it was. So thank goodness I didn't lose a whole night's sleep over two little pieces of the Easter grass. It's a good reminder, they studied this, that about 80% of the things we worry about don't happen. So when we talk about in yoga, chitta vritti yoga, the calming of the mind stuff, it's this sort of thing where we worry about things that very often don't even ever happen. So learning to stay present in this moment and recognize what's in our control and what's not what we can worry about, what we don't have to worry about, would be very helpful. Sealing our lips, breathing in and out through the nose. Let's begin to count our breath. And try to equalize the inhales and the exhales. Let's open our eyes and switch the cross of our legs. Let's bring our hands behind us and round down. Lift the chest, shine the chest forward, little chest expansion. Inhale, lift and open. Exhale, maintain the position. Inhale, expand. Exhale, maintain. Inhale, expand. Exhale, maintain. On our next inhale, let's sweep our arms up. Let's exhale back down. Inhale, sweep up. 
Exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale the right arm up and over. Hold here for a couple of breaths. Again, using those inhales to really open and expand those right side ribs. Next exhale brings that hand back down to the floor. Let's inhale the left arm up and over. And hold it here. And as before, we use the breath to open and expand. Now it's the left side ribs. Come back down. Let's inhale the right arm up. Exhale across. Inhale open. Exhale down. Inhale the left arm up. Exhale across. Inhale open. Exhale back down. Now bringing the right hand behind us and the left hand to the opposite of the thigh. Inhaling tall. Exhale turn to the right. Again, if the inhale, stack the spine, try to find length. As you exhale, try to turn deeper. Hold here for a breath or two. Now let's slide the left elbow down to the knee, rest against the thigh. And as we inhale, we'll expand right side ribs, that right arm up and over. So now we have our lateral reflection and a slight twist. Again, use that expanding breath open those ribs. And inhale and exhale the hand back down. Come back to center. Now we sweep the left hand behind, cross the right hand over. Inhale tall, exhale and turn. Inhale, pressing up to the crown of the head. Exhale, deepening the twist. Stay here for a breath or two. Now let's slide that right elbow down to that right knee, resting on the side. Inhale to expand the left side ribs and float that left arm up and over, getting this twisting lateral flexion. Again, that expanding breath opens the ribs. Let's inhale to rise back up. Let's straighten your legs out. Here again, being on your blanket, being more comfortable. Let's just start by bringing the left foot to the right thigh. Facing the right foot, inhaling tall, exhaling to hinge forward. And if you'd like to use your strap here, you can wrap your strap around the ball of your foot. But this is not going to be a really strong stretch yet, so don't overdo it. Just feel the stretch, just hold it for a few seconds. Relax back up. Now let's lift that left leg. Bend the foot close. We're just going to hug that shin and sit up nice and tall. So feel yourself grounding into your sit bones and the lift of your sternum and then your spine. Let's come back to your staff pose. Shake it out. This time we'll bring the right foot to the left thigh. We'll turn to face the left foot. Option to hang on to the strap. Inhale tall. Exhale, pressing the chest forward. Again, don't make it too strong of a stretch. This is gentle today. We have to warm up a whole lot. So we're just going to take a light stretch here. Breathe into it. back up. We'll lift the right knee, we'll hug it in, hug the shin, stack the spine, round the two your six bones, lift the stirrup. Three. 
extend that right leg out. Step the shoot down. Bring the left foot in again. This time we're going to grab the thigh. Hug the thigh. Stack the spine. And then just begin straighten that leg. Whatever amount works for you. Keep the spine tall. Lift the sternum. Bend the knee. Bend the foot. Back to staff pose. Shake it out. Right leg comes in. Hugging the thigh this time, not the shin. Stacking the spine. Extending the leg. Whatever works for you. Back to staff pose. Let's bring the left foot in again. I'm going to sweep the right hand behind. We'll inhale the left arm into the air. This is opposite we do a lot of times, so don't get confused. So, same side arm as the knee is bent. We exhale, that arm down inside. Now press. The arm against the leg and the leg against the arm. Trying to create equal pressure. Inhale, fall, exhale, and turn. Try to open the chest, squeeze the shoulder blades together. Relax back to center. Staff pose, shake it out. And then the right leg comes in. Ground the foot, stack the spine, sweep the left hand behind. Inhale the right arm, again, same side arm as the leg. Up, exhale down. Press the leg against the arm, the arm against the leg, creating full pressure. Inhale tall, exhale and turn. Opening to the left side, squeezing shoulder blades. Relaxing back to center, back to staff pose, and shake it out. Let's bring the soles of our feet together. Coming to bottom Konasana, the now ankle pose. This will be a more gentle pose if your feet are further forward. The typical space I suggest is your feet, your heels about the distance of one of your feet from your torso. Inhaling tall, pressing forward. Again, nice long spine. This is going to open the hips. If you start to round over, you're going to get more of a lower back stretch. Focusing on the hip opening right now. Finding length. Rising back up. Now we can cross our legs comfortably. Or if we want more hip opening, we can stack our shins. Ankle over knee and knee over ankle. I'm not doing that today because I'm just keeping it easy. So cross legs is fine. Inhale tall. Crash lifting up. Exhale, reaching, rounding forward. Now we do round this time. Let the head hang heavy. And walk your fingertips forward. Just try to lengthen the spine. Okay, nice relaxing the lower back. Walking your hands back in slowly, we begin to sit up. And whatever you did earlier, if you did the kitchen or if you just did the cross legs, switch the cross. So we open both sides equally. Inhale, extend. Exhale, rounding, reaching forward. Letting the head hang heavy. Walking the fingertips forward. Slowly walk our hands back in as we sit up. Find a breath. 
Let's bring our hands down to the mat and roll forward onto hands and knees. Again, you've got a blanket handy, perhaps, if you want to push in your knees. We'll place the wrists under the shoulders. We always have the option to use our fists for wrists. This just keeps those wrists aligned. Sometimes this flexed wrist is uncomfortable, but you can straighten it with the fist if you prefer. Knees under hips. Bring your awareness to your abdominals. Draw your navel up and into your abdomen. Slide your shoulder blades down your back. Try to find length in the neck and make space between your ears and shoulders. As you inhale, lift the chest and the elbow, look forward to the back. As you exhale, scoop the abs and pull the spine again. Inhale, lift to look forward. Exhale, scoop it in. Inhale, lift look forward. Exhale, scoop it in. We'll come back to neutral spine here. Let's just shift the rib cage from side to side now. Kind of shifting your weight from one hand to the other. Coming back to stillness. Now let's roll the rib cage. So we'll come into a cow position. We'll push the ribs to one side, then we'll swoop into cat. We'll push the ribs to the other side. We'll come back into cow. That's one rotation. So two more. Side, cat, side, cow. One more. Side. Cat, side, and cow. Let's reverse directions. Side, cat, side, cow for one. Cat, cow for two. Side, scoop, side, for three. Bring our big toes together. Open our knees wide. Let's sit back to child's pose. Lengthening the spine. Now let's really create that hasta bandha with our hands on the, on the mat. Rounding our palms, rounding the heels of our hands, the knuckles of our palms and our fingertips. Creating a seal. Opening hand and lift. To a kneeling plank, three hips, four engaged. We'll exhale back. Child's. Inhale to the other plane. Exhale back to channels. One more time. Take a breath. Inhale to Exhale back to channels. Now we're going to slide forward onto our bellies. For baby cobra. So let me say that again. This is baby cobra. It's not an extreme back bend. We plant our hands under our shoulders. We're going to zip up our legs to press the thighs together. Squeezing elbows in. We lift the chest. Pressing into the hands. Just baby cobra. Not extreme. And just take your gaze to the top of your mat, or let's say a foot or two in front of your face. A couple of breaths. Relax it down. You can rest your head. Turn in one direction. We'll come back, hands on your shoulders. Inhale, lift. Keep the elbows in. Try to open the chest and squeeze the shoulder blades and up those legs. Press your toes into the floor. Relax down, turn your head. One more time. Hands on your shoulders, elbows in, zip up the legs, press the toes into the floor. Inhale and lift. Relax. Shift back to our knees. Sit into child's one more time. We'll open our hands wider than our shoulders. We'll float the right hand over on top of the left hand. 
and we'll sink it to the right hip. Feel expansion in the right side of the body. Inhale and exhale. Opening the right side, ribs and sinking the hip down to the heel. Let's float the right hand back to the right side. Settle in for a breath or two, finding length of the spine. We'll float the left hand over on top of the right. Inhaling and exhaling to sink deeper, expanding the left side rib, sinking the left hip down toward the heel. Inhaling and exhaling that left hand back out. Taking a breath or two. Now walk your hands in toward our knees, curling our toes under. Let's roll back into the balls of our feet. For our next inhale, we'll straighten our legs coming into forward fold. Exhale, and just relax down. Let the head hang. Let's do a rag doll. Right hand grabbing left elbow, left hand grabbing right elbow. Head nodding or shaking. Arms swaying and out side to side. Now releasing elbows. On the next inhale, we'll lift up to a flat back and bring our hands to our shins. Slide the shoulder blades down the back. Finding length in the spine. Inhale. Exhale back to forward fold. On the next inhale, we'll sweep our arms and rise up. Mountain pose, come to heart center. Shift our weight from side to side. Grounding down through the feet. Now shifting the weight into the right foot. Let's lift the left foot, point and flex. Circle the toes, reverse the circles, and ground back down. Rounding to the left foot, we'll lift the right foot, point and flex, circle the toes, reverse the circles, and ground back down. If you have a strap or a belt, go ahead and grab that. I just want to do one standing pose today, and I want to do the sort of chest opening variation of side angle. So, Let's hold the strap in the left hand. So into a wide stance. Let's pivot the right foot to point out to the side. We'll line up the right ankle with the left arch. That left foot is parallel to what would be the edge of your mat if you had a mat, maybe you do. That left ankle is the farthest point from you. Keeping lots of strength and straightness in this left leg, we're lunging to the right side. Sinking down. Making sure that the knee is over the ankle. If we look down, we just see the big toe. Taking the strap in the left hand again, bring the right forearm down here to the thigh. We're going to sweep that left arm up. Now, the strap should be behind your back, not in front of you. Let's sweep the arm down behind, past your hip, bending the elbow. The strap should be hanging down behind you. Let's try to bring that right hand to grab that strap. Now make your grip as wide as it needs to be. Keep openness in your front body. Rolling open the shoulders, especially that left shoulder. Opening your chest. Breathing to expand. Keeping length in the spine. So not hunching forward. Again, the strap lets you open up as much as you need to. Expanding the front body. Squeeze your shoulder blades together. Let's relax. Let's rise back up. We'll pivot our feet. So we'll turn that right foot parallel here. The heel the furthest point from us. That left, that right leg straight and strong. The left foot points to the side. Lunge to the left. We'll take the strap in the right hand. Bring the left forearm to the thigh. Remember to try to make a nice long line of 
the side of your body here from side angle. Bring the strap behind your back. Sweep it down past your hip, bend your elbow. And now with your left hand, try to grab that strap. Give yourself as much space as you need to roll back that right shoulder. Keeping length in the spine, opening your front body. And breathing. Find the expansion in your chest. And relax. Come back up. Put the strap down. Tilt the other feet back in. Come to mountain. Roll the shoulders. Reach out with the fingertips. Let's just take a moment for a couple of breaths here. A nice tall mountain pose. Feeling the energy flowing up the front body and flowing down the back of the body. Inhale to sweep the arms up. We'll exhale to swan dive, softening knees. Bringing hands down to the mat. Coming down to hands and knees. Dropping to one hand. We're going to set up now for some restorative work. We're going to do different angles. We're going to do forward, backwards, and sideways with our restorative work today. Our first pose will be um, child's pose. It's our forward bending pose. You will need bolsters or blankets in front of you to rest on. You might also find it comfortable to have a rolled blanket to put behind your knees and it might be comfortable to have a rolled towel to put under your ankles. Remember, these things might feel fine when you first start them, but as you hold them for several minutes, they might become a little more challenging. So we're in this for the long run to really give things a chance to relax and release. So I'm going to do the full Magilla here with a towel under my ankles. See what I mean? Here for support. A blanket under my knees. I'm not crunching the joint. Then I can pile blankets, pillows, cushions, whatever I need. forward to my supported child's pose. I'm just going to stay here for a few minutes. So you can rest your hand on your, you rest your head on your hands this way if you like to maintain for the whole time. You want to turn your head one direction. I'm going to watch the time and tell you to turn it the other direction in about three minutes. So make yourself comfortable. Make sure everything feels supported. Sink into this child's pose. Close your eyes. Find your breath. Settle in.
If you need to turn your head the other direction, now is a good time to do that. Bring our hands down to the floor so we can press ourselves up. Breath. All right, that was to open up the back of the body. Now we're going to turn around and open the front of the body. We'll do a supported bridge today. So normally, or often in class, you would use blocks for this, but I'm going to do it with a bolster so you can do it with pillows or cushions or whatever available. And also there's an option here to use a strap around your thighs if you like. Also option to use a blanket through your head or anything else you like. Remember throughout a restorative practice that one use of blankets is to cover yourself if you get to become cool. Restorative yoga does stimulate the parasympathetic nervous system which is our um, calming system that tends to cool off the body, so it's not unusual to get chilly when you're doing a story of yoga, so blankets are good for that. I'm going to come to a bridge pose, rolling onto my back, with my, feet, my knees bent, my feet planted, somewhat close to my hips. And again, I like to use the strap so that my legs are nice and supported, so I don't feel like my legs are going to fall out to the side at any point. You don't have to do this, I just find it nice. So I'm going to wrap my strap around my thighs here. Not too tight. I still want my knees about hip width apart. I'm going to ground it to my shoulders, lift my hips off the floor, and slide my bolster under my lower back. I think I've got 
podcast by Matt coming with me. Now you could use a larger bolster, a smaller bolster, a pillow, a blanket, whatever gives you an appropriate amount of lift. Find that level. You're grounding into your shoulder blades. Palms up. Eyes can gently close. And come back into the breath. You can have your arms down towards your side, or you can have them straight out to the side if you like. That feels better. Or you can out beyond your head. You find whatever arm position feels good to you today. Breathe.
deep in our breath. Perhaps we want to roll on one side. Come on the elbow. Bring ourselves back up. Take a strap. Take that off. It's one of my favorites. Supported bridge. You can always just do that whenever you want to. So we've opened the back of the body, the front of the body. Now we're going to work on the side body. We're going to be doing a supported lateral bend here, supported side bend. And you need a cushion, a pillow, something to lie over. Don't let it be too big. So if you've got a smaller frame, use a smaller, maybe a rolled up blanket or a smaller pillow. I'm going to keep another pillow handy because we'll be lying on our sides. And the tricky part here can be getting your head comfortable. So I've got a pillow for that. I've got an extra blanket here if I want it. But to start, just bolster. I'm sitting sideways to it. So when I lie over it, my waist and side grip, especially my waist, on top of it. I want this shoulder supported. So I'm a little bit high with this bolster. I'd use a smaller bolster if I had it. But if I don't have a smaller bolster, I can put a blanket down to support my shoulder. Now I'm comfortable. Now I'm going to slip a pillow in here for my head. So I can stay right here, whatever's comfortable. Now, options to get more opening would be to extend your top leg out and to extend or and or to extend your top arm over. And I can also extend my bottom arm out and my hands together. So find whatever variation works for you. We'll stay here for a few minutes. So we'll switch sides. Let your eyes softly close. Back to your breath awareness. Think about expanding the ribs on the top side of your neck. Try to just melt and relax. If anything doesn't feel properly supported, just put a towel or a blanket underneath to give you the support you want. Thank you. 
Opening the breath, feel greater expansion in the top side ribs. We can begin to slowly press ourselves back up to a seated position. And the easiest thing for you will be just to turn around the other side. I'm going to switch sides so we can see what I'm doing again. Just turn around. So you're sitting on the other side. Whatever support you need. Now the two sides may not be the same. Don't expect them to necessarily be the same. That's fine. So from my seated position, I can bring my waist to cross. I can support my head. I can straighten my top leg if I'd like to. I can extend my top arm if I'd like to. I can extend my bottom arm if I'd like to. Find the options that work for you. Support it. Seal your lips. Bring your breath into your top side ribs. Put your eyes gently closed. And settle into this supported side bend.
Adjustments we need to feel supported and grounded to the floor. Our legs can open wide, our feet just fall out to the side, palms are up. You can need to adjust your hips or shoulders to lengthen your spine or lift your head and slide it to lengthen your neck. Just make that awareness, find that awareness, and then adjust accordingly. We'll softly close our eyes. We'll settle into the breath. For today, I'd like you to bring your awareness to all those points of contact where your body is sinking into the floor. It's the back of your head, behind your shoulders, hips heels, your arms, whatever it is, but you can really feel that contact, that grounding, that melting, and just feel the weight of your body sinking down as you relax, breathe, focusing on that breath. Letting go of thought, letting go of worry. Just coming back to your breath. Following that breath, deeper into your bosom. Thank you. 
Welcome to remain in Shavasana for as long as you like. Whenever you're ready, wiggle your fingers and toes. Make some movement to your wrists and ankles. Move any bolsters and blankets you need to. We'll just roll to one side. Stacking hip over hip and shoulder over shoulder. Pausing here. And then with as little effort and as much ease as we can find, we'll press up to a comfortable seated position. Pressing hands on thighs, stacking spine, rolling shoulders back and down, opening chest. with this thought today, you're much more likely to find something when you're looking for it. So if you're looking for bad things, you're probably going to find bad things. But if you're looking for good things, you're much more likely to find good things. So the thought is, look for good things. And then be ready to receive them when you find them. Sometimes the universe says yes. When it says yes, as the saying goes, you take yes for an answer. Let's bring our hands to the right center. The light in me honors the light 